Hello, right, today I am talking about concurrent training. This is something I've been asked about a little bit. In other words, doing cardio and training with resistance, or I'm doing a lot of cardiovascular work, but I do want to improve my body shape. What should I do? What's the effect of both? What's the effect of doing one and not the other? What's the effect of doing both together? What should I do? I'm going to answer that. The first thing, we just need to look at the basic adaptations you will get from doing each on their own. So if you're doing lots of cardiovascular work, then you will increase your body's efficiency. So you'll become energy efficient. You'll be able to do as much work as possible for as little energy expenditure as possible. And your body does this by your heart will get a bit bigger, a bit more capillarization, more mitochondria, bigger red blood cells, these sorts of things more type, higher proportion of type 1 slow twitch muscle fibers which can't produce powerful contractions but they're very good at repeatedly producing submaximal contractions. So that's this end of the spectrum. Other end of the spectrum, just training with heavy weight or with real, real high intensity, you're teaching yourself to do the exact opposite and it'll be good at focusing all your energy into a short period of time, delivering bang, exhausted. So you can, you're powerful, you're fast, but you're no good at doing things over a long, long, long period of time repeated. Increasing your type 2 muscle fibers, which are the fast twitch ones, which are energy inefficient, and the ones which will grow other than on a bit of size. If you're doing a lot of cardiovascular activity, however, you don't really necessarily want to grow because you want to be energy efficient. Again, energy efficient, energy inefficient, slow, fast, complete opposites. And therefore, if you're doing a bit of both, then there's a tug of war going on. You're trying to get your body to adapt to this and this, and they're the opposite. And so logic would dictate that surely you can't get the best of both by doing both. You know, if I want to be good at tennis, then I'll play tennis. If I want to be good at football, then I'll play football. If I play a bit of both, then i uh, get a little bit better at both, but I'm not going to max maximize my potential at either. And the research for, for this stuff would also indicate this. It proves it, in other words. So, if we're looking at, say I look at the, uh, say you want to be stronger or you want to be more muscular, then on a crude level, most bits of research which have investigated doing different types of activity together or alone for this would show you that if you're doing resistance training, pretty much you get a line like this. Resistance training, say 100% gain. Concurrent training, a bit of resistance and a bit of endurance, 50% off or down. Endurance training alone, none obviously for that. And it's pretty much that. Pretty much that line. If you just endurance training alone, you're not going to get any strength or size increase or tone, really. But if you do a bit of both, if you added a bit of resistance training with your endurance training, then you will get a, you will get some in, increases in muscle size and strength. If you sack off the endurance training altogether and you just train with weight, then you'll get the best results. Okay. Now, if we're looking at another variable people often interested in, which is your basal metabolic rate, how many calories you burn at rest, a great way to do that, to improve that, is by training with heavy resistance. You should teach your body to be energy inefficient and there to be a bit more muscle mass of you. And so you need more calories to sustain you. And therefore, bang, very good at increasing your basal metabolic rate. However, this time, if you do heavy resistance high intensity training and some steady training, then it, it has a very, it's not quite as much of an effect, but still has a big effect on improving your metabolic rate. If you just do cardiovascular training alone, it literally decreases your metabolic rate because you're being so energy efficient. Now obviously, if you are a sports person and you want to make sure you have a good level of cardiovascular fitness, just lifting heavy weights ain't going to cut, is it? However, you don't necessarily need to be plod, 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 plod. And even marathon runners and ultra endurance athletes these days incorporate high intensity exercise into their training. Now, I would say your best bet is to include sprint intervals and high intensity intervals, probably best up on a bike. Obviously, if you're, it's a sport involves running, then, then with running. But it's found that a bike will be less detrimental to your strength and size gains than running will. But that will be enough for you. Only if you're really an ultra endurance. Uh, athlete that do you need to be doing much steady 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 state cardiovascular activity now if you're looking to increase muscle size if you're looking to look at muscle tone and if you're looking to decrease body fat high intensity exercise is, is essential for that uh, now if you do that with if you really love doing cardio then you know do that with it and it, it, it wouldn't have too much of an effect uh, on 
on body fat in terms of uh, doing it concurrently but in terms of muscle size and muscle strength definitely this alone is best but if you're going to be doing cardiovascular training with it then you would keep that at quite a high intensity and that is the best way to counterbalance both without losing the game from that if you've no interest in looking more muscular or being stronger then you know it ain't necessarily for you but for, for health outcomes it is good to do some high intensity work definitely so to wrap this up in conclusion if you're looking to be stronger or you're looking to be more muscular then doing resistance training alone is best concurrent training will be okay but not as good as that alone endurance training alone will have no effect on this if you're a sports person and you need to have a good level of cardiovascular fitness but you also need to be strong and powerful train with weight and then also do high intensity intervals if you're an ultra endurance athlete you need to be doing some steady state long cardio but you need to be but you will be enhanced by doing some intense intervals as well i hope that was helpful please ask me any questions facebook chrisfell personal trainer twitter at chrisfell pt i'll include some of the studies in the comments below if you want some further reading and i will see you soon